I'm going to talk about bad sex. Yes! So I, I'd like everybody to just take a moment before I start my story to think about bad sex that you've had with yourself or with others. <laughs> okay, now you've got a vision. Don't think too long. Let's move on quick. I don't want to ruin the mood of the room uh, with your bad sex. I want to entertain you with my bad sex. So... <laughs> So I was talking with my 73-year-old mother a couple of weeks ago on the phone, and uh, she said to me, I have a weird question. And my mom asks weird questions all the time, and she says weird things all the time. That's her forte. And uh, so the fact that she prefaced it with that was like, oh, I'm leaning in now, I'm leaning. <laughs> Put on my five-point <laughs> safety harness. Okay, go ahead ask away and she says um, of the men that you've slept with who was the best lover and as I'm laughing she adds I've been thinking about this a couple of days now <laughs> <laughs> and what she wants me to tell her is what the list is like top five uh, so that she can compare and contrast my facts with her guesstimates. <laughs> it's my 73-year-old mom. And so we talk about it, talk about anything with my mom, and um, inevitably we lead, that leads like into, well, who wasn't so adept in the bedroom? And um, by the way, my mom, my mom capped off her share for the who was good in bed with this. Um, she says... <laughs> My 73-year-old mother says, I think of all the men that I've slept with, I was the best. <laughs> so, so, yeah, she's awesome. So we start talking about who's not that fantastic and I tell her my last relationship actually ended in part because of bad sex so I knew this guy for about a year and we were very good friends and um, we became girlfriend boyfriend girlfriend and we slept together and it was terrible it was really bad and now I still orgasmed but I mean because you know third wave feminism says that's okay they fought for that right I don't know. Some of you, I saw some of you women nod back there, like, yep, they sure. I don't know. This is a PSA. This part right here is a PSA for all the rest of you ladies who didn't nod. Uh, you've got like a powder keg of passion in your pants there. Just, <laughs> you don't even need the right matchstick to make it go off. <laughs> Just. There's like 8,000 nerve endings in your clitoris alone, and that doesn't even include the rest of your undercarriage and whatever else you think is your erogenous zone. So, you know, ladies, get to it. This is, <laughs> if this isn't feminism in action, I don't know what is. So it's bad. It's super bad. Back to the bad sex. But I'm thinking, well... You know, first time, and that's what intimacy is, is getting to know each other better in all the different ways, and, and we've both kind of implied that we have kind of a high drive, so practice makes perfect, and um, cut to a year of bad sex later, and uh, 14 bad sexes, because it's also not just bad sex, it's in infrequent sex. <laughs> And I'm very confused. I'm very confused. And, and I've talked to him about it, and I've asked him, you know, oh, he's happy with the frequency, and he's delighted with the quality. <laughs> <laughs> and he's super happy with the relationship. And, you know, I feel like he's just sideswiping my vagina and driving away. <laughs> And I feel like... <laughs> I feel like there's something, there's like a piece that I'm missing. There's something that isn't right. And so I 
just throw up a prayer to the universe, and I just say, hey, can you just let me know? You know, I don't want to think about this. You just, you just tell me what's wrong. And so uh, that happened. This is what, this and this is how it happened. I was, I went over to his place to watch his cat. He was, he was visiting his folks. And so I went over there, sat down, was going to let the cat sit in my lap and just relax and read some news and hang out with this cat. And somehow, well, because I haven't had a tether installed physically into myself between my physical body and my phone yet, I haven't found an unethical doctor that will do that. Uh, somehow I've gotten out of my house without my phone, which is scandalous. Um, so I open up his laptop, which is always sitting right between his two chairs, his two bachelor chairs, and uh, his laptop. I open up his laptop, this cat on my lap, just a nice calm afternoon, and um, a dialogue box pops right up and says, security warning. The link hot underscore teen underscore fuck underscore big underscore jugs may contain a virus. <laughs> do you want to continue? <laughs> and yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> It's an 18-minute video, folks. 18 minutes. Um, and so, to add insult to injury, by the way, the big and jugs both have an extra superfluous G. B-I-G-G. G-G-T-S. <laughs> and so, suddenly, everything drops into place. I, it can all make sense. It all makes sense. Perfect sense to me. And uh, I don't want to be too crass here. <laughs> But let me just say, for example, if you were a younger person and you found out that you really liked the animal, the beaver, and then you found out there was this thing called the internet and you could go and look at all these pictures of beavers, um, so you'd maybe look at a thousand pictures of beavers before you like honed in and found out there were two different kinds of beavers and you really liked the Eurasian beaver, so you looked at like a thousand more pictures <laughs> of the Eurasian beaver, and then you saw like the delicate back claws of some beavers. So you looked at about a thousand pictures of the back claws of the beavers. And then you looked at about a thousand pictures of beavers that had had pups. <laughs> and you looked at a thousand pictures of beavers chewing wood. <laughs> so, you know, over the years, how many beavers are too many beavers? Then you find out they do documentaries on beavers. <laughs> Watch a beaver build a dam. I don't know, I think the metaphor is getting away from me here now. <laughs> <laughs> My point is that when an actual real live beaver sits in your lap, you don't know shit about beavers. <laughs> you. You know what you like to look at non-interactively with beavers. So before if any of you are like squirming in your seats, if you're like big porn fans, you're like, oh, this is awkward. <laughs> you know, uh, don't. Uh, this isn't a judgment. On this, I'm not casting aspersions on porn. I'm casting aspersions on this guy's porn habit. Um, because it, it isn't about uh, porn. It's about living your predilections out in the open. Um, because if you, especially if your predilections are considered vices, which porn is considered a vice. Um, you know, if you want to have mediocre sex once a month and look at porn for the rest of the year, I guarantee you there's a lady out there that's like, yeah, I'm in with that. <laughs> that's, that's just about right for me. <laughs> and if, you know, if you're a woman who wants to have the guy dress up in a tutu and you put on a strap on and you're like, let's do my version of Swan Lake sodomy. <laughs> that guy is out there 
masturbating to Tchaikovsky right now. <laughs> Is he, is he here? <laughs> oh, maybe he's not right here. <laughs> uh, so what it is, is live your predilections out in the open with the people that you claim to have intimacy with because secrecy is actually the antonym of intimacy. And if you're not careful, hot underscore Teen underscore fuck underscore big underscore jugs will drop out of the sky like an anvil and will break the gravity of the heart of the one that loves you and they'll just float away because it's all porn and games until some beaver gets hurt. Yeah.